everybody. Happy Earth Day. We are here with little Miss Maeve. Good morning. Who is quite grumpy this morning. We, um, we got her down from her enclosure and she thought we had breakfast for her and we do not yet. So uh, Maeve is here. We're going to sit in the sun, enjoy some time together. Please let me know if you're here. Leave a comment from um, saying where you're from, what your name is, and we will say hello. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Miss Maeve. What do we think? She says, I want my breakfast. Where's my breakfast? Oh my goodness, it's just not fair. Yeah, I know. So Maeve is a tiny little species of bird called a merlin. They are in the falcon family, so uh, they are very closely related. They are very closely related to our kestrels, if you've ever seen a kestrel. Hi, Asher from Wyndham. Hello, good morning. Happy Earth Day, everybody. It's the 50th annual Earth Day. We're so excited. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Good morning. Um, so we are here with Maeve. Hi. Good morning, Miss Mavis. To enjoy some sunshine on Earth Day. To enjoy the sound of our songbirds. Hi. I know. Um, so Miss Maeve here was brought to us because she was originally hit by a car and can no longer really fly super well. So she, um, she does live with us because of a permanent, a permanent injury. Hi, Brendan. Good morning. Hi. What do you think? I know. You're okay. And you might hear this talking and think, oh, she sounds upset or she sounds angry, but she is actually not. She's just communicating with us. Hi, Sue. Good morning. Um, she loves to chat. This little lady is very talkative because she was raised by people after her injury. So she kind of has taken on that vocalizing um, from humans. Good morning, Joe in Londonderry. Good morning, Beth. Thank you guys. Happy Earth Day. Good morning. It is the 50th annual Earth Day. We are um, celebrating here at the center by enjoying... Hi! I know! Enjoying our time outside, enjoying some time in nature, and we definitely recommend that you guys all do the same. Good morning, Kim. Hi! Uh, we uh, can really enjoy getting outside right now. It's a little chilly out, but I think it'll it'll warm up throughout the day. So... Have a great Earth Day outside today um, in a safe way. We're really excited um, to be joining you guys. So Maeve here um, is very, very small. I don't know if she... I know. I don't know um, if you guys can see for reference. Let's flip the camera so you guys can get a sense of how tiny she is. Hi. What do you think? Hi, hello. Um, so Maeve is pretty tiny and she is actually, hi Anne, we miss you guys. Hi Olivia, Jean, Addie, Ida, and Wayland. Good morning. Hello. Hi Maine Beer, we're so excited to have you here. Happy Earth Day. Um, but just because Maeve is small does not mean, good girl, does not mean that she isn't a fierce predator. So she is still a raptor. She still has these beautiful talons that she's going to use to catch her prey. Um, but, and she is also very strong. So these guys have incredibly strong muscles. They are very good at uh, catching other birds. So they are very fast. Um, but she is pretty tiny and diminutive, but they also don't seem to really know their size. They're kind of like chihuahuas in that way. They have been seen chasing down and bullying other larger species of birds. If a uh, a hawk or something comes to harass their nest or maybe a crow or a raven they will fight them off they'll um, squawk and peck at them and all sorts of things they'll chase them away so they're very bold little birds hi and she's a merlin once again a merlin just like the wizard merlin the wizard was most likely actually named after merlin the bird which is uh, an old french word that just kind of means pigeon hawk um something like that and that's um that's something that they're known to eat as well or pigeons which if you can imagine how big a pigeon is compared to a merlin that's pretty sizable um happy earth day from deborah hello good morning hi beth hi carolyn hello deacon hi um so she is actually not very heavy she probably weighs about like half a pound which is not a lot she um 
she might weigh as much as like a half empty can of soda. Yes, we're so excited. Hello. Um, so yeah, that noise is actually not a sign that she is necessarily upset. Um, she actually does like to chat. So whenever you walk by Maeve's enclosure here at the center, um, she will talk to you. She'll say hello. Maeve was brought to us as a young Merlin when she was probably around like three months old. She was just on her way out of the nest and she was most likely hit by a car. She was found on the side of the road uh, with a wing injury. Are you looking up at the sky? Who do you see? Um, and she uh, had a wing injury. This little feather over here, you can see it kind of sticks out a little bit. Um, that is actually located, that's kind of the site of her injury, it's right on that wrist. And so she can no longer go back out into the wild because she doesn't really fly as well as she would need to in order to survive in the wild. These guys are usually um, living in pretty densely forested areas. They like to hunt things like birds and small mammals that are going to be racing through the forest. So they need to be able to turn on a dime and shift really, really quickly. They are very good at maneuvering through trees, um, very good at changing direction and banking, and she can't really do that anymore because of this injury over here. She can still get up into the air. She, um, her shoulders and her elbows work fine, but the little feathers that come off of her wrist have been affected by this injury, and those are the ones that really help them to change direction. So Miss Maeve will live with us for the rest of her life because of that injury. What's funny is that the officer, the animal control officer that was called to her to her call uh, to her accident was saying, um, yeah, I'm not touching that bird. Uh, those are some scary talons. And she is a little pint-sized lady, so we had to go help with that rescue, but it's very, very sweet. She's a good girl. She was very young when that happened, so she was raised by us after that point. We determined she was gonna be non-releasable fairly quickly. And um, from that point on, she was with people being handled by people so she's very comfortable and she loves to talk she loves to chat um, because she has learned that people do that and it's something she should do as well I'm so glad to see how many of you guys are here we welcome everybody thank you so much for tuning in happy Earth Day to everyone and thank you so much for Tarsia for donating we have a donate button here on our page um, and until the end of today all of the donations from you guys on this platform as well as on our website will be matched so we have a goal of raising $50,000 for a an emergency fund to help get us through the rest of um, this situation that we're in right now. And uh, we have a generous anonymous donor who is matching all of those gifts. So any donation you make today online for the Center for Wildlife will be matched, whether it's on Facebook or on our website. So thank you, thank you so much for, um, for donating Tarsia and your gift will be doubled. It's awesome. Um, so I have quite a few people to say hello to. Hi Luke and Bailey and Kimberly, uh, Nicole, Jess, good morning. Um, Evelyn and Fiona would like to know how old she is. So she is most likely around, she is about three now. Um, so we've had her for around three years. We do have a pretty good idea of how old she is because of, um, because we did get her as a young little bird. Um, and what does she eat? So in captivity, she eats a combination of birds and mammals. So we do give her mice um, that forms the base of most of the diets of our ambassadors. And then we also give her um, quail as well. Hello, yes, I know. They are bird eaters in the wild. They do like to eat a lot of birds. And um, that means that in captivity, they need, they need to eat some birds as well in order to feel um, to be uh, well fed. So we give her quail. Yes, 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 yes. Which are farmed specifically for captive bred birds. So they're uh, little birds. Uh, usually we'll get them from a supplier. So they're not like patient birds or wild birds. They are farmed just like our chickens are farmed. Good morning from the Seco Science Center. Hello. Um, my previous employer. I miss you guys. I hope you're doing well. We've They've been creating some wonderful virtual content too. So check them out. Happy uh, Earth Day. Thank you so much to Michael and Mar Mary L for donating. Rebecca, Mary, 
Jess, Bobby, hello. Thank you guys so much. You're so sweet. Good morning. Yes, Maeve, hello. <laughs> Good morning from Lexi and Sarah, Heather, Tuli. Uh, good morning from Charlotte, Andrea, Mary. Thank you guys all so much. You're so sweet. Um, definitely let me know. I know Mavis. Definitely let me know if you have any questions about Maeve. Hi, Katie. Good morning. Um, I'd love to answer them. These guys are fascinating animals. I'm also, I think, going to move with Miss Mavis. We're going to go over to another perch area. So we're going to take her for a little bit of a, a walk. Um, Amy asks, yes, I know, where and how much does she sleep? So she is an, a diurnal, yes, she is a diurnal animal, which means, yep, yep, you're okay. Um, she is a diurnal animal, which means that she's going to be awake during the day and most active during the day. Where are we going? And then she's going to rest in the evening. And these guys do build, um, they have nests, so they do nest in trees, and they'll build their nests. Good job. Hi, I know. Uh, let's see, happy birthday from Kim. Hi, Acadia and Nora. Good morning, Autumn. Um, she, uh, Autumn would like to know if she makes a different call. So I don't know if you guys could hear that. When we started moving around, she did start making a little bit of a different noise. So um, she has kind of a conversational sound that she makes, uh, which is that uh, one that you're hearing every so often, just a, like a beep, beep, beep. And uh, that's pretty normal for her. That's just her way of saying hello and communicating with us. I mean, I've been talking this whole time. And so Mavis thinks that she should be in on the conversation as well. Um, and then I don't know if you guys heard, but when I started moving her, her call got a little bit shorter. She got a little bit, it got a little bit more abbreviated, like a <laughs> kind of like that. And that is actually like a, Hey, watch it kind of call because she's moving Good morning. Hi. Um, because she's moving, wants me to know that she, uh, she wants to be comfortable. That would be the, um, the sound that she makes when she is kind of letting me know like hey watch it i'm fragile <laughs> uh let's see yes she is very very sassy the chirping is definitely just conversational she will do that as her way of communicating with me she does it with a lot of her handlers visitors at the center if you ever visit you'll see um you'll see her or hear her talking quite a bit Yes, I know. Good morning. She's also pretty hungry. Uh, she hasn't had her breakfast yet, so there is definitely some sassiness because of that. Uh, let's see. Tuli wants to know if they come back to the same nesting place every year. They will come back to the same general area. These guys spend most of their winters down in actually as far as like Costa Rica and South America. So way down in the jungles, um, in the rainforest. And they're there hunting for a lot of other little songbirds that have migrated down south. And they will uh, come back around this time. So we have been seeing some migrators up here at the mountain. Uh, I saw a broadwing hawk on Mountain Road the other day. Where are you going? You're fine. So I don't know if you guys can see, but by her body language, you can kind of tell when she's thinking about moving. She'll like look like she's going to pounce somewhere and she's on a leash, so she's not going anywhere. Uh, but she, she definitely gives a lot away with her little, her body language. Yes, I know. Uh, so they will return back to the same general area and, um, return back to the same mate. Um, and they will mate with, uh, the same bird the next year if they are alive so they if they've made it back from migration they will return to the same general area and what's cool is that these guys will migrate during the day in big big groups called kettles um, and you can see a lot of them migrating over areas like Mount Agamenicus here at the center because it's uh, next to the coast they use the um, the winds coming off the coast to help them to migrate north and they also use Mount Agamenicus as like a, um, a landmark so they're gonna follow that it's kind of the largest peak around so they're gonna follow that up um, let's see how big are her eyes she does have some pretty big eyes good girl you're so cute um, they're not as big as an owl's eyes or anything like that but they are very large and they can see a fair a good distance around her so she can see around um, she also has very good vision uh, at long distances so I don't know if you guys can see she's looking up in the sky 
she's checking out what's up there when she tilts her head up she's going to be looking at things up in the sky that we probably can't even see so there might be a vulture up there circling or something like that she can see that even if it just looks like a little pepper flake to her so she has amazing amazing vision uh, what is the difference between a Merlin and a Hawk? That's a great question. So Merlins are in the Falcon family, um, which are like our Peregrine Falcons, our Kestrels, and they are all really evolved for speed. Um, they are evolved to be super fast. Uh, the Peregrine Falcon is the fastest animal on the planet. They can jump off a cliff and dive down towards the ground at up to 300 miles per hour in a free fall towards the ground. So they are really evolved for speed. And you can see she has a very pointy body structure. Um, so she's kind of shaped like a bullet. She's, she's evolved to cut right through the air. A hawk is really evolved for long soaring stretches. So he's going to be, uh, they're going to be hunting out. I know. They're going to be hunting out in a big open field where they can soar above in the air. I know you've probably seen this before where a hawk or a vulture or an eagle will be soaring with their wings outstretched. Those wide uh, wings with the finger-like feathers at the tips are gonna help them to catch the wind and keep them up in airborne without having to do a lot of flapping. So they're very energy efficient and they're scanning the ground from up in the sky and gonna swoop down and hunt on something on the ground. These guys tend to chase other birds. They tend to uh, be very active hunters. So they're gonna be uh, chasing prey that's very fast and that's why they are evolved to be so so fast uh let's see what do their nests look like i've never actually seen a merlin nest but um, most nests do look like either a cavity or um a crook of a tree with branches with leaves and um and sticks in them so i can imagine they would look a lot like um similar nests that's a good question uh levi wants to know how far she can see i'm not sure if they've done as many studies on merlin vision as they have done on other species of falcons but in the case of the peregrine falcon peregrines can actually see up to two miles away from them which is incredible so they've done these experiments with peregrines where they'll go out in a big field with a peregrine falcon that um, is being used in falconry and the trainer will throw a lure up in the air and the bird is trained, I know, the bird is trained to go catch the lure when it sees it. So they'll throw this up in the air and the bird will come and get it. And they can get two miles away from that bird and still have it see that lure and come and get it. So they know that um, peregrines can see up to two miles away. I can imagine that these guys, because they're hunting in more densely forested areas, maybe not hunting as far away as two miles, will probably not have that much vision that great long distance vision but they can see very 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 well and the other thing that's really cool about falcons is that they're similar with their vision to like cats where things that are moving things that are in motion actually stir more sharply to their brains than things that are standing so i don't know if you guys have ever played with your cats before but um when you like wiggle a toy mouse in front of them or a piece of string they get really excited and then once you stop moving it they kind of get bored and forget about it and that's because their brain doesn't really register it and see it as well when it's standing still so these guys can see a, a bird move it flying very quickly and see it in very very sharp detail where it might look like just a blur to us. So they have incredible, incredible vision. Where her, her ears, Evelyn would like to know. Her ears are located actually right behind her eyes. They're hidden under a bunch of feathers and she is not one of our birds that will let me touch her. Uh, she likes to nip. So um, I know, yes, I know. So if you see um, right behind her eye there, there's a little bit of, I know. A brown an extra brown patch with some feathers that look like they're in kind of a little bit of a curved shape that's where her ear would be located it's a great question we have so many wonderful comments and questions thank you guys so much for being so interactive today happy Earth Day to everybody who said that um, I'm so glad that you guys are here and learning about nature on Earth Day uh, Asher asks how do they fly so far which I know Oh, that's, yeah, so they um, they are just really, really fast. They're, just, they're evolved for speed. So uh, especially our peregrine falcons are able to use gravity to their advantage to pull them down towards the ground. And then um, 
and then they uh, they also have this incredible body shape that's very uh, aerodynamic which means it doesn't uh, slow them down their feathers are all perfectly flat against their body they're very pointed they're bullet shaped so they cut right through the air and they can go super fast Karen would like to know how old she is. So she's about three years old. We got her when she was a young bird. She was probably only a few months old when she was hit by a car. You are, you're so cute. Um, and she was, uh, she was brought to us with this wing injury. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the little feather right there on her wing that sticks out. She broke her wrist and that feather attaches to that wrist. So she is not able to maneuver very well when she flies. She can get up in the air, she can get lift, uh, but she is not able to turn very well or bank very well. So she is with us because of a permanent wing injury. Uh, it's a little chilly out here. She is okay. She has plenty of food and, you know, fat stores on her. But uh, when you see her puff up like that, it's because the wind is picking up and she's uh, protecting herself from that. So that's why she fluffs up sometimes or shakes it out sometimes or um, slinks down. It's usually in response to temperature. Or if she's like settling down and feeling calm, she might fluff up. But she's very, very sweet. Uh, happy Earth Day! My daughter would like to know if their feathers keep them warm in winter. So these guys actually are migratory. So that means that they are not really here in the winter. When it gets to be fall and chilly, they're going to fly all the way down to Costa Rica, South America, to the rainforest. For, uh, for the winter time. And they're only really coming back right now once it started to get a little bit warmer. They will migrate one, because it's so cold, but two, also because that's where all of their food has gone. These guys will eat other smaller species of songbirds, and many songbirds will migrate to uh, to the rainforests in South America and Costa Rica and uh, Central America for the winter. So um, they are following their food as well as the warm temperature. Do you see, oh, she saw, she spotted a crow up in the air. I don't know if you guys saw her trace that thing that just flew through the sky. She's very good. Thank you guys so much for donating. You guys are so sweet. We're up to $300. That's amazing. Uh, we had a wonderful response yesterday. I was so, so pleased. You guys are so sweet. And all of those gifts that you're giving today will be doubled and matched by an anonymous donor as th uh, as far as through uh, midnight tonight. So thank you so, so much for donating. We really, really appreciate it. It goes right to the care of this little lady. It helps to pay for all of those quail that you like to eat, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, she has some very, very good uh, vision. Um, let's see, are their populations increasing? Tiffany, they probably are not. Um, we have seen a marked decline in many of our raptor, um, especially these small raptor uh, populations. They are not yet considered endangered, but their migration is very risky for them. I know. It's very risky for a lot of birds, but it's especially risky for um, for these guys because of their small size. So they do have to contend with a lot of pressure, uh, not only from, you know, development, from people like developing their habitat, but also from um, from cars. They are seen hit by cars. Miss Miss Maeve here was also hit by a car. The best thing we can do to prevent that is just try to make our roadways as safe as possible for them and as unattractive to them as we can. So driving really carefully, being safe, keeping our eyes out for birds that might be around or any other species, any other animal. Um, and then also trying to refrain from throwing things like um, garbage or uh, banana peels or apples or food, anything like that, onto the roadway that might attract little mammals, and then those mammals will attract the presence of predators like Miss Maeve. So she was probably hunting near the road as a young Merlin because she didn't have any other good options. She was young, she was inexperienced, she didn't have her own territory. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Hi, you're fine. I know. So she is most likely, she was most likely hunting near the road because it was an easy source of food for her. And if we can keep those roadways from looking attractive to our predators, then um, it, will, it will really help to decrease the number of hit by car birds that we see. Where are you going? She's like, I'm gonna fly off. You're so sweet. Such a cutie. 
Uh, so Karen would like to know, can she turn her, I think head is what you meant to say. Can she turn her head all, where are you going? You're not going, you're fine. Can she turn her head all the way around? She can't turn her head ne uh, necessarily as far as an owl can, but she's still very uh, flexible in that head joint. So she is able to get a pretty good range of vision around, uh, not necessarily as good as like an owl's. Owls can turn their heads to see maybe 270 degrees around them, which is three quarters of a full circle. She is still very, very uh, flexible in the joint that attaches her spine to her head, but it is not as flexible as our owls. So um, that's a great question. Let's see. Hi, Amanda. Hello. Hi, Chris. Uh, good morning, Anna. Good morning, Birdie. Yes. Um, yes, she is a falcon. So she is a small species of falcon called a merlin. Uh, merlins are very closely related to kestrels. They're pretty uh, unusual to see in the wild because they like to occupy pretty dense forests. Uh, but they are um, found in our area. They love um, this area at Mount A for hunting. There are lots of songbirds up here. So we definitely are in a good habitat for these guys. Are you preening? That's a good girl. Nice job. Hi, Kathy. Amy would like to know, do they ever molt their feathers? Do they look the same year round? Where are you going? Are you stretching? So we're going to do some falcon yoga now. Good job. Um, they do molt the, their feathers. They're not going to change their plumage the way that some songbirds do. So like they're not going to have a breeding plumage and a non-breeding plumage, but they will molt their feathers to keep them healthy and strong. So their feathers can sometimes get broken at the tips. Um, and, uh, you know, they might, they might hurt one of them or, or just need to refresh them. And so they will molt their feathers once a year. Usually they're going to do that before, um, before they migrate or before they, and then again, after they, um, after they are done mating and breeding. So they keep their feathers in really pristine condition for migrating because they need them to fly. And then they try to have them looking nice for, um, for their mates as well. And then they'll molt after that. Uh, who is her favorite keeper? I don't know if she has a favorite. She definitely is like naughtier for some people than others. So she did give me a little bit of a run for my money this morning. Um, she really loves one of our volunteers, Caitlin, who's been handling her for about a year now um, because she is like special and cool. And, you know, she, I think she gets bored with me <laughs> seeing me every day. But really, whoever has food is her favorite. Uh, what predator, predators would she have? That's a really good question. So other species of raptors would definitely go for these guys. Um, they're pretty small. I think it's snowing, guys. I don't know if you can see that, but I think it's it's snowing. Are you cold? She's like, why is it winter again? Um, but any sort of uh, raptor that could raid her nest would uh, definitely be a predator, especially of young birds. Notably, though, these guys are really tough customers. They are known to... Um, where are you going? Where are you going? They are known to fight off and harass birds like hawks and eagles that come to try to raid their nests. So two of them, especially a mated pair, will like peck at and bomb a predator who's trying to eat their babies. They're very fierce. They're kind of like chihuahuas. They don't seem to know their own size. So um, they're very, very fierce little guys. Hi, Elias. Um, I can certainly answer your question if you have one. Thank you guys so much for, um, for being so interactive today. Happy Earth Day. I know. Hey, everybody, if you have any other questions about Miss Maeve, I would be happy to answer them now. Um, she is going to go uh, back into her enclosure and eat her breakfast after this. But we are certainly happy to answer any questions. And thank you once again to everyone who has donated. That is so, so sweet. Um, and all of those gifts are going to be matched until tonight. So thank you so, so much for donating. It goes right back to the care of our animals. Um, all of these guys are, uh, re you know, relying on us to feed them every day, keep them safe. They do wonderful uh, with... Um, Hi, with our programming and they certainly do miss it so uh, we're we're really happy to be able to bring them to you guys Mary would like to know how many eggs do Merlin's lay each season that's a great question so usually the answer is around like three to five and then the extremes of that oh, there a birdie up there 
the extremes of that might be up to like seven, but usually um, the ones that survive are not going to be, um, are not going to, to, you know, exceed maybe three or three to five. Wish we could see her eat. Yeah, so she is going to go eat her breakfast. That is something that um, we will put on Facebook very, uh, very carefully we will usually put like bunches a bunch of graphic warnings <laughs> beforehand because uh, it does get a little gross she will take her little beak there and rip up her food um, she's very very good at doing that so she uses her beak kind of like a knife we love Maeve happy Earth Day thank you Michael uh, Logan she is around three years old Are you stretching yeah, her beak is very sharp. She's stretching out her wings right now. I don't know if you guys can see that. When they do that, we call it falcon yoga. Um, she loves to stretch and relax. Um, the cool thing about their beak is that they actually have this little notch in it, and we call it a tooth, but it's not really a tooth. It's just part of her beak. It's this little notch you guys can see really well from the side there that helps them to crack the necks and the spine of their prey. So when they catch something, they're pretty quick to uh, to kill it because of that little notch in their beak. And it is also very, very strong. You're so cute. You're fluffing up your feathers for everybody. I know. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with another one of our ambassadors here at the Center for Wildlife. Uh, we're so excited that you guys all joined us. Have a pleasant and happy Earth Day. Definitely get outside and enjoy some nature um, safely. And we will see you all tomorrow. Miss Maeve. Thank you, Maeve. Uh, Maeve. Maeve says goodbye and where's my breakfast? She also has, does have very sharp talons, you can see. So we're gonna go eat our breakfast and say uh, say goodbye. Thank you guys so, so much and we will see you tomorrow.